All right, so on the bench today is a Zenith. This one is an XBV443 with a complaint of DVD won't play. Now, I don't think this has a DVD recorder, just a DVD player. But we're going to have to get into it and see what happens. Uh, hopefully, the inside is a bit cleaner than the outside. But that might be to my advantage. Maybe all it needs is a good deep cleaning. Let's get into it. All right, so I got the top off. Just take a look around in here. It's pretty doggone clean. Hardly anything built up on the heads, on the drum. It looks really good. It is a forehead hi-fi stereo. And the way you can tell is down here. There's one Allen set screw. That's the hi-fi head adjustment height. And then these two Allen set screws right there. Those are the video head adjustment height, another hi-fi head adjustment, and the two adjustments for the video, two hour and six hour heads. Mechanism looks really good. Controller, almost no debris on it whatsoever, no accumulation. Over here on the power supply, I'm not seeing any bulged caps like in the Magnavox units. And so next we need to go ahead and Get the laser back and take a look at the lens and see if it looks okay. But first, I'm just going to power this thing up, put a disc in it, and see what it has to say. Got a disc in the unit. Let's close the drawer and see what actually happens. And it's telling me to check the disc. Well, let's go ahead and see if a cleaning will take care of it first before we do anything else. So there's the optical pickup. It doesn't look too terribly bad. I've got my flashlight shining in here at a weird angle. But you see that dark stain kind of to the right in about the two o'clock position? That looks like oil migration out of the lens. I wonder what might have happened here. If I look kind of straight down on it, I see absolutely nothing. But if I get the flashlight off to an angle, you can definitely see it's darker, much, much more apparent in person than on the camera. But let's go ahead and I'm going to shoot some compressed air down in there just in case there's dust. And I'll go ahead and give this thing the glass cleaner and cotton swab cleaning and see if it makes any kind of a difference at all. Just a cotton swab with regular household glass cleaner, moistened, not dripping. Uh, lens looks definitely better, but I am kind of doubtful that's going to change anything on the playback end of this unit. Well, let's give it another try and see what happens. Okay, disc is loaded. Let's close the drawer and see if we get different results. So far, exactly the same. Same thing, check disc. Okay, well, I'm going to pull the DVD player out of this unit and check some capacitors. Other than that, I've not had good success on these units, like I've said. And I've shut off one of the video lights so it's not so bright, so reflective. This unit does have a solder pad on the optical pickup, so I'm going to go ahead and bridge that right now. Just with a ball of solder like that to protect the DVD diode and the CD diode against electrostatic discharge. Don't forget to remove that after the repair. Well, the nice thing about this unit is no surface mount caps to be seen. So I should be able just to get under these things and do a quick ESR. 0.27, very good. 0.28, just fine. 0.33, great with that. We have to move these out of the way just a tad. 0.28, perfect. 0.81, that's a little high for a 100. It's not the end of the world. 0 0.3, 0 0.47. These are the input and output filters for these little regulators right here. So that one was 0.26. That 
that was 0 0.42, 0 0.6, 0 0.28, 0 0.9, what value is that? Well, that's a 47, that's not that bad. Zero, wait, oh, I shorted, sorry. 0 0.5, 0 0.46, 0.59, now into the signal processing area. 2.7. Now it's only a 10, I'm not worried about that. 2.8, these are all 10s, it looks like. 0.5, that one's not bad. 2.9, I think I did this one, maybe not. 0.46. And 2.8. Well, all of the capacitors in the power supply right here, these two regulators, these two regulators, they all check fine. These are in the DVD signal processing area. They check totally fine. Let's go up just a little bit. 3.3, and then uh, let me drag this down here so you can see. 1.1 and 3 ohms. A couple big filter caps right here. Let's see what they have to say. 0.22, perfect. And 0.14, excellent. Well, I don't think it's going to be a capacitor issue at this point. I'm leaning more towards an optical pickup problem because of that oil migration. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and button this thing back up. I doubt they're going to want to put a mechanism or an optical pickup into this unit, being just a player. There's no electronics on this unit, by the way. That's why I bridged the solder pad right there on the optical pickup. So I won't give this back to the customer for a few days. So if somebody uh, knows about these LG Lucky Gold Star, it does not stand for life's good. It stands for Lucky Gold Star. If uh, anyone knows of a cure for this, let me know. I really would appreciate it. Anyhow, all they complained about was the DVD not working and nothing about the VHS mechanism, which appears to be in pretty pristine shape. Anyhow, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video, even though it's not fixed, but please like it. I really would appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. So for the purposes of illustration, I went ahead and pulled the mechanism out. And I think this might be the issue right here. And it's not doing it now, of course. There it is. You can see the ohms changing. I'm not touching the switch. It's stuck at 30 ohms right now. That is the home detect switch and that tells the microprocessor where the laser actually is. When it's home it should be zero. When it's not home it should be infinite. You can kind of see it bouncing all over the place. I'm not moving anything right now. It's just bouncing everywhere. But if I give it just a little bit of encouragement it goes to infinite. So I'm going to go ahead and spray some deoxid D5 down in here. It's going to make a mess, I know. And I'm going to work it about a thousand times. It's still got a problem. Although that's much better than when we started. So I'm just going to work this thing, like I said, about a thousand times, let it fling back every time. We may have to pull that switch out. It is not cooperating. Fix yourself. Yeah, yeah, not happening, sweetheart. All right, let's pull the switch out and see if we can get it apart. See if we can figure out what's going on inside.
So as you can see now, the switch is working perfectly. I believe that the metal portion came off of the movable portion. So I went ahead and reattached it and then took the soldering iron and heated up that little tab in there to kind of swedge it over the end of the metal portion. Now it's working perfect. You can see it has a slight amount of over travel right there before it makes contact. There's the contact point. I can release it and I still have some over travel left over. Because I believe if the microprocessor can't detect where the switch is, it can't get the proper home position and it's never going to try to move the optical pickup or we'll move it to a different location, the wrong location. So let's put this thing all back together and give it another try. Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe it'll work. I don't know. It's better to be lucky than good. One of my sayings. Okay, switch is remounted. and it seems to be working perfectly. Well, let's throw this junk back together and see what happens. Okay, solder bridge is removed. Go ahead and fire this thing up and see if we get different results. Hopefully, yes. If you lower your expectations far enough, you'll never be disappointed. So I'm, I don't have high expectations, unfortunately. All right, here we go. Disc going in, let's see what's gonna happen. So far, same result. No one knows it's a DVD. Look at that, it found the table of contents. Let's hit play and see if it actually tries to play. Oh my gosh, it's actually working. I cannot believe it. This junk is saved from the recycle bin, or well, at least the DVD side. Maybe that's a fluke. I'm gonna take it out and try it one more time. Stop, open. Close. Well, that's two in a row. It kind of does this wonky thing where it reads it, stops, reads it, stops, laser clicks, reads it, stops, but it's actually working just fine. I don't believe it. It was that stupid laser home switch the well, whole time. One thing for that wife of yours. Uh, I haven't tested the VCR. The customer didn't ask me to test the VCR, but I think I'll test the VCR just to make sure. So we'll stop this and we'll get the VCR in view for you guys. There we go. Switch it over to VCR mode. We'll pop a tape in it and see if it's going to munch it. There it goes. Took the tape. It says it's playing. It is playing. There's my workbench. It's filmed on a donated Panasonic camcorder. It's got sound. The VCR is actually working. I cannot believe it. Oh my gosh. This thing is actually working just fine. Stop. Rewind. Will it rewind? And it appears the VCR works absolutely perfectly. I can't believe it. Anyhow, that's going to be it. I can't do anything else. It works. Certainly hope you enjoy the repair on the Zenith XBV443. Just a simple home switch for the optical pickup on the DVD side. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I have a full-time job and I do these repairs in my spare time. Incidentally, those pictures that you see right there, I took all of those in the black and whites. I processed and printed those myself. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.
Mecha and I doubt they're going to... And that tells the mechanism 